Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Mickey Loco channel. Today we're going to show you how to maintain the Ford 6F50, 6F55 six speed front wheel drive transmissions. Now, these transmissions are found in the Ford Tour 2008 and newer, the Ford Explorer 2011 and newer, and all model years of the Ford Flex and the Ford Edge. Now, this transmission is one of the last four transmissions that is easy to maintain. What I mean by that is it actually has a dipstick up top and a drain plug down below. It's super easy to maintain, so there's no reason not to change the fluid every 30,000 miles or so. You have to remember this transmission has an internal filter, which cannot be changed unless you take the trans out and split the case. Yeah, so you might as well maintain the fluid, and if you do, this transmission is really stout. It will actually offer reliable service to 150,000, maybe 200,000 miles, no sweat. First thing you want to do is get your vehicle on a nice flat level surface, wheels chocked, vehicle in park, open the hood, let it vent out a little bit, then go ahead and go down below and get started. Next, we're going to slide underneath the vehicle and start draining the transmission fluid. Now the transmission is located on the driver's side of the vehicle, so you can just look underneath there and you'll see it. If there's a big shield in the way underneath here on some of the newer models, you simply unbolt it, get it out of the way, and it'll be all exposed under here just like this, okay? Now on the Ford Taurus, you probably have to jack the vehicle up to get a drain pan your arm underneath there. Uh, whereas on the, the Edge, the Explorer, and the Flex, you should be able to slide right underneath here and get to it. Either way, the drain plug is going to be right here, the lowest drain plug on the transmission. I say that because on the 6F50 and the 55, there are two plugs underneath here. This one's actually a line pressure tap, so fluid will leak out of there, but it won't drain the transmission like this one right here. So we're simply gonna pull this one out. I like to put a little compressed air to it. Kind of clean around it a little bit. And then we're going to simply pull it out. Now you can do this on a, a cold transmission or a hot transmission. Of course, hot transmission is gonna flow right out of there much faster and be a more thorough drain and fill on here. Now the plug size is 7 16 or if you have it, 11 millimeter. And we're just gonna start draining it out. Now, of course, make sure your key is out of the vehicle. Um, so it cannot be started inadvertently and then we can go ahead and just pull this plug out there we go and let it start draining out of there now this process is going to take a good 10 minutes to get it all out of there so just at this point go ahead and get your supplies ready your funnel ready all that good stuff um, for filling it back up while it's draining out of here now one tip, one key point about this transmission, and the reason why I recommend every 30,000 miles for a drain and fill, is to keep the fluid nice and clean and red like this. This one's actually being drained out to do a PTU replacement, so we have to drain it for that job. That's why it's being drained out of here. You wanna keep it nice and clean, so every 30,000 miles. And the reason being is the transmission filter is not serviceable. It's internal to the case, so they have to pull the transmission out of the vehicle and then split these two case halves in half and then change the filter. So if it plugs up, you're pulling the transmission just to change the filter out. It gets real expensive real quick. It's always a good idea to do draining fills on here every 30,000 miles. Keep that fluid and all the sediment out of there before it gets picked up by the filter and plugging up on there. After about 10 minutes or so, we're gonna to start to see an inconsistent drip coming out of here. At that point, we're good to go. We can go ahead and plug it back up and start filling it up. Before you do that, you wanna go ahead and clean your drain plug, then put a little bit of thread sealant on it, uh, going back together. I'll put the link to the right stuff down below. And then we're gonna go ahead and just wipe it off real quick, like that. Make sure we're not putting anything foreign into the transmission. And then we can go ahead and screw it in by hand. That is key here so we don't cross thread anything. Then we're gonna go ahead and just snug it up. The torque spec on this is 80 inch pounds. You do not wanna over torque it. You will crack the case and then you have bigger problems. So what I do is I just use a regular 3 8 like this and I'll choke up on it, get here to the center, one-handed, snug, and that's it. You have to remember that all this plug is doing is plugging up a hole in the transmission. That's it, it's not doing anything else. So 80 inch pounds and you'll be good to go. At this point, we can go ahead and let the vehicle back down and start filling it up. Now, once everything down below is nice and secure, we can come back up top here and start the fill process. 
What's nice about the 6F50 and 55 transmissions is they still have a transmission dipstick. 07 to 2019, there is still a dipstick. It's one of the last four transmissions to have a dipstick to check, fill, and adjust the fluid from up top here, okay? Now in 07 to, to 2009 mid-year models, there's gonna be a filler neck that comes up to right about here, next to the upper radiator hose and the air box here. And that has the same cap. You unscrew it, you pull it out, and put it off to the side. Whereas 09 mid-year and to 2019, they changed it over to Mercon LV. And Mercon LV is a little bit more sensitive to fluid change. It expands more than the older fluids. So they kind of buried it to hide it and unless you're actually servicing the fluid, okay? So these ones are gonna be right there on top of the side cover of the transmission. On the newest models, you might have a big air box right here in the way. You might have to pull it up and out of the way to reach your hand down in there to get to that cap. Either way, it's gonna be the same setup as you see here, okay? So you simply reach down in there, unscrew it, little wiggle, and you pull it up and out of there. Look at that cap and dipstick all in one, okay? Then you're gonna take your long reach transmission funnel and we're gonna put that down in there right in the center, okay? And then we're gonna fill it four and a half quarts of fluid. Early models, like I said, take Mercon V and the later ones take Mercon LV. If you're not sure, check your dipstick cap and you'll tell you right on there, okay? Either way, it's four and a half quarts. And the big tip I can give you here is that this transmission does not vent well. So if you just grab one of these quarts and you just start pouring it into there, like you fill oil into an engine fast, it's gonna gurgle out and it's gonna be all over the front of the transmission there. It's just gonna pour out as it gurgles. So you wanna pour it slow, four and a half quarts, and then we'll start it and we'll check and adjust from there with our fancy dipstick here. Just to give you an idea, this is how slow you want to pour it, okay? It's a light stream coming out of there like that. It still doesn't take that long, but it'll avoid a huge mess down below. Trust me on this one. Now, once you get a four and a half quarts into the transmission without spilling any, we can go ahead and start it up. We're gonna start it, leave it, and park. Know your vehicle should not be smoking like this. This is from other repairs. Rust penetrant burning off, don't worry about that. Just a little fire. What you wanna do is take your cleaned off dipstick, okay? And there's a certain way you want to insert into the front of the cover on there. You see this arrow right here? That's there for a reason. You wanna align that with the Ford emblem, the FOMO Co on the transmission. And that'll seat it in there properly to get a proper reading of the transmission fluid level. This is how it looks. We're gonna get down in there. See how it's like all over the place, kind of wobbly. It's not really sitting in there right until you align it and then it just falls in. You see that? Right there. That's where you want to put it into and then pull it out each time to check the transmission fluid level. Get you focused here real quick. Whoop. Now you can see on this one, we're barely touching the tip of the dipstick on here with fluid. You can see a little bit right there. This is five quarts currently. Most of these take around five and a half, 5.7 quarts of fluid. So let's put in another half quart at this point to get it up to the point where it's um, at the bottom of these hash marks on here. Let me get you a better view of this. Okay. All right, there we go. So the hash marks on here are for when the fluid is hot. Well, the fluid's not gonna be hot initially. You wanna get it to the bottom of the hash marks right there when it's cold like this. Then we can go for a test drive, come back and recheck it, and it should be somewhere in the hatch marks on here, okay? So let's go ahead and put another half port in there so we can start getting a reading on the dipstick. All right, now once you have a good reading on the dipstick here, we're starting to show fluid, we can go ahead over to the inside of the vehicle here and put it through the gears, okay? What you wanna do is put your foot in the brake. We're gonna put it through each one of these gears for 10 to 15 seconds. Ford says 30 seconds, but if you don't fill the fluid channels in 10 to 15 seconds, you have bigger problems. Neutral, same thing, drive. And you just kind of go through them on here. And the same thing going back up. I like to do it going back up also. 
and then reverse. Watch out. All right, put back at the park, let it idle, and then you can come over here and do your final check of the fluid level. Make sure at this point that we're showing up here to the very bottom of the hatch marks on here. Right there, the very bottom of the hatch marks. Maybe a little bit into the hatch marks on there, you'd be good to go. If everything shows good, we can go ahead and focus. Um, we can put our cap back on, line it up, turn it until it locks, and then we can go on a little test drive. After a five, 10 minute test drive, we can come back and let the engine idle a little bit so the fluid can settle. And then we can take one last reading on there, same exact way. We're gonna put it in, we're gonna line up the arrow. We must do it by feel at this point. And then pull it out, okay? And you see how this one is right there, kinda in the center of the hatch marks? That's where you want it to be. Remember the fluid expands a lot. So you want room in there for expansion on those hot summer days where you're taking long trips, stop and go traffic, all that good stuff. So that's where you want to be, right around the center of the hatch marks. But that's about it. There's a few key tips to changing the fluid on here and adjusting it. But as you can see, overall, it's a very simple procedure. I'll see you guys next time.